Okay, so we want to continue talking about evidence for climate change. And now we want to talk about uh, tree rings. So if you cut down a tree, you will notice that a tree has rings. It has a ring for every year that it was alive. The thickness of those tree rings is an indicator of how much rainfall occurred for that growing season. So you can see if a tree had a dry season or if it had a wet season by looking at its tree rings. Now, by putting together uh, trees from different time periods, so let's say that this particular is from the present. So let's say that this one goes from the year, uh, I don't know, let's say the year 1923 to the year 20. 23. So that's when this particular tree was living and we've got the tree rings that goes with it. Now let's say that we have another tree over here but it existed let's say from 1800 to 1950. Okay and it's also going to have tree rings. Now what we can do is we can take some of the tree rings from this one that overlap with this one over here. So this is going to have some tree rings that goes from 1923 to 1950. And so we can look at those tree rings and so now we have a complete record from 2023 back to 1800 based on those tree rings. Well, we have trees that date all the way back to about 2,000 years ago so that we can have a complete record of what was the weather conditions in a particular area back to something like 2,000 years. And so from that, we can figure out what was the climate like in the past. Okay, another line of evidence is going to be glaciers. So you can have glaciers that are on the continents in mountains, and then you can also have uh, continental glaciers that are like at the North Pole and the South Pole. And if those glaciers are melting back faster than what new, it's, uh, new snowfall is occurring, then the front of that glacier, let's say it's in a valley, is going to go up the valley. If on the other hand it's snowing faster than what the glacier can melt, then the glacier is going to advance down the valley. Uh, similarly, for some of these uh, glaciers that are on a, on a uh, continental ice sheet, uh, they can either be moving forwards off the continent and into the oceans, or they can be pulling back. And so there is a certain amount of evidence that is showing that glaciers are melting back. And so that's indicating that the climate is warming up. Okay, a third line of evidence is going to be called permafrost. So with permafrost, you have the ground surfaces here. Okay, and then there is going to be a layer under the ground that is going to be permanently frozen. So it's so cold that it's permanently frozen. Now this layer up here is going to be frozen during the winter time. And then during the summer time, and it depends on what latitude that you're at, but uh, to a certain depth it's going to thaw during the summer time. But you're still going to have this material underneath it that is going to be permanently frozen. So we're going to call this permafrost. So in this picture here, the, the red and the white areas represent areas that in the past were permafrost. The white area is currently permafrost. So in that area, there is some material under the ground that is permanently frozen. And you notice it's up north where it's very cold. Now the red areas indicate areas that today are completely thawed. So there is no permafrost in those red areas on that picture there. So that's telling us 
that uh, over the past hundred years or so, uh, certain areas of Canada no longer have permafrost. Now, it still has the permafrost there in the north, but some of that permafrost in the south has now melted. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what is the monetary cost of climate change.